That one's on. I'm trying to hide. Should I try to hide these as best I can? Or this yeah. wire? That's perfect. Okay. All right. I'll just. You gonna stay in here, TJ? You think I'm gonna mess something up, don't you, on this technology stuff? <laughs> I'm Greg Stiles. This is Thursday at 3 p.m. This is a road to a stress-free Sunday in room 31. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Why don't we go ahead and we go ahead and start here and uh, and get started. Let's uh let's start with a word of prayer, can we? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, Father God, uh, we just uh, thank you for allowing everybody to come here safely, and we just we thank you for the opportunity to share ideas and uh, and just to make people better uh, because what we do is so important. Uh, we try to build your kingdom as much as we can uh, every single day. We try to bring Jesus to everyone, every day, everywhere, and so we ask that you would bless us and use us as your instruments and bless this time that we have together. We ask this in your name, Amen. So. Uh, I, I think I met a lot of you guys as, I, as you came in, and um, I'm Greg Stiles. I am the Chief of Staff at Concordia San Antonio, Texas. Um, I, I'm, I'm a little surprised to see so many people because, you know, we're really going to kind of talk about meetings, and that's kind of boring, but I, but I hope you'll get something out of this, uh, and I, I'm going to just kind of go through and tell you all and, and show you how we set up meetings. Um, TJ, can you hit that light and let's, and, and, and the way, wow, it's got really dark. Okay, is everybody okay with that? That's, that's way better. Um, so this is not the only way of doing things, but let me share where, where I kind of come from and my background. I'm a retired Army Lieutenant Colonel, and so most of what I do as the sort of day-to-day -day operational director at Concordia kind of stems from my army training and we, we have a lot of fun with it. Our church, I would, would, would venture to say, is more army-like than any other church you'll ever run into, but you'd never know it. Um, we start usually headed into Sunday looking like this, but you got to remember, stressed spelled backwards is desserts. So what we really need to be is in the dessert mode, okay? And, I, you know, I would say it a hundred times probably. It's just weird. It's crazy how it seems like Sundays roll around almost every seven days, no matter what else is going on. So you've got all this stuff going on in your, in your world, you know, like this conference. You're all here. And so how many of you will be back at your church on Sunday morning doing what you do week in and week out? Yeah, all of us too. All of us too, right? So that's called life, and we need to figure out a way to kind of make it more stress-free. So what I... What I would like to do is kind of start big and work small. These are our staff, just by way of information. And listen, it doesn't matter if you've got three people on your staff with you or if you've got 200. We have about 200 full-time and uh, part-time employees. It doesn't matter. You can still take something away from this and, and make yourself better 
at being prepared for Sunday morning and what may or may not happen, okay? And just be prepared through the year better. So what I like to do is start big and then kind of work our way small. And I'll show you what a typical week kind of looks like and I'll show you one meeting and I'll even give you my agenda for that meeting that I think everyone should do. Everyone should do this one meeting. It's called the rock drill. Who's heard of a rock drill? Anybody? Are you, you in the military? Uh, Air Force, my, my dad was in the Air Force. Okay, so you maybe know what a rock drill is. But I'm gonna, I'm gonna teach you all that today. These meetings, there's like, there are probably seven of them or so we're gonna talk about, but these are quick hit meetings. You don't have to have a long meeting. Our longest meeting at Concordia is less than an hour, I'll bet you. Less than an hour, we're in and out and we're productive, we get stuff done. That's kind of the key. You don't wanna, meetings are, have become so monotonous, they're the same thing over and over again, and that's what you don't need. What you need is to figure out a way to keep moving towards the goal, towards the mission, and keep on track and get in and get out so you can do something productive instead of sitting around in a meeting all day, right? So one of the ways you do that is always have an agenda. Whether you write it on your, your, your napkin at lunch, whether you have a standard agenda that you use, have an agenda and stay on task. You gotta stay out of the weeds and you can't let, you know, my meetings get hijacked all the time. There's always somebody on your staff that'll hijack your meeting if you let them. You know, they start talking, they get off, off track and start talking about something else. You've got to reel that back in. You've got, to, you've got to be able, you know, they ask questions that are in the weeds. And so you've got to have the ability to realize that's happening and then just say, hey, can we, we'll talk about that offline after this meeting, okay? So just, just see me after this meeting and we'll go through that. And then move on back on task, okay? That's, that's the best way to do it. And in all that you do, the golden rule is create a plan and execute the plan. All right, you create the plan and then you execute the plan. Do not change the plan, execute it. All too often in the middle of an event, in the middle of something, somebody has a great idea. Hey, what if we change this to do this? That's a great idea, but we ain't gonna do that. We're gonna execute the plan that we've already talked about. We've already been through it. Write that down, we'll, 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 we'll maybe debrief, we'll debrief this and maybe we'll do that next year, but we are not doing that now. We are executing the plan that we created. My kids hate that. My kids, I, I, I did this to my kids. I used to say, well, so you got a date tonight? Yes, sir. Well, where are you going? Oh, we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go get, get some pizza and then go to the movie. All righty. Um, what movie are you going to see? Well, I'm going to see this one. Okay. Um, what time will you be home tonight? My kids never had a curfew. Well, we'll be home by 11. Super. I said, so, just so we're clear, who created that plan? Me or you? They would say, well, we, we did. I said, right. I didn't create this plan. So now you execute that plan and don't you change that plan. <laughs> don't you go somewhere where you didn't just tell me you were going you execute the plan and if you are even thinking about changing that plan you better call me on the telephone we better have a conversation don't let me find out that you didn't execute the plan that you created and they'd be all right and I'd get a call every now and then and well you know dad you know we went to the game and we were gonna go to Pizza Hut but everyone else you know it's really happened over at Las Palapas we really rather go there and I'd say to Tyler well, was that the plan Okay, Dad, I will see you at home before 11. Goodbye. <laughs> and that would be just about that fast. But it's true in church work too. Create the plan and execute the plan. That's so critically important. So let's talk about meetings, all right? So these are kind of the meetings that we're going to talk about. Six of them, all right? The semi-annual calendar meeting. Remember, we're starting big and we're going to get small. IPRs, IPR stands for in-progress review, and we'll get to that. Staff meeting, just a regular staff meeting that everybody probably has and goes to. The rock drill, the huddle, and then AARs and de or debriefs. We call them both. That's an after action review, okay? So these are the, these are the meetings we're gonna talk about, just briefly, all right? So semi-annual calendar meeting. These have really evolved. Uh, when we started, we do them twice a year. And these are, this, this is really important so that you can you can throw your meetings up. I mean, you can throw your calendar up and you put a whole year's worth up there, okay? And you put everything on it that you can. 
everything because it's, it's, it's all cyclic, right? It's, it's cyclic. We, we, we do kind of the same things year after year, right? So does anybody not know when your church picnic is? We call ours Concordia Fest. It's the last Sunday of October. You know, it's right there with the Reformation. It's, it, you know, it, or, you know, Halloween, Reformation, all that. It's right there. We, we know when it is, always. So let's put it on the counter. And what we do is in January, we sit down and we talk about everything January through June. And those dates and those things, we are chiseling in stone, all right? You'll be amazed if you, if you put it up there where you can see it all. And we've got a church, school, daycare, and a whole bunch of ministries going on. So it's your chance to deconflict things, right? Because you only have so much space. You have all these things going on, but you only have so much space. So you do this calendar meeting, and you go six months out, and you chisel it in stone. And then when you're done with that, you start penciling in July through Christmas, through New Year's Day. Pencil things in. Uh, we know when Christmas is gonna be, therefore we know when our Christmas pageant will be. We know when our live drive through will be because we do that about the same time every year. Start penciling them in. Pencil them in. Look for, look for funny things on the counter that might change the way you would do things or something, you know? Look for when school's going to be out for Christmas. Look for, you know, all these things, all these crazy things that can happen if you put it up there. Now, when we first started this, we had two giant pieces of cardboard about the size of this screen, and I had six months on each one. And this meeting took probably <laughs> four hours, maybe three hours, because I stood up there with a bunch of different colored markers, and I hand wrote everything, and the school was red, and, you know, the children's ministry was blue and the band was green and the daycare was yellow. You know, everybody had a different color and we, we had to put it all up there and write stuff in hand. Well, that was a bunch of years ago. And so now we, we do it on a smart board. We've got a smart board like this. But you could do it on a, uh, just an overhead projector. You could do it on anything. We, now what we do is we throw our Google Calendar up, our master calendar. We've got one calendar that's the master calendar. We throw it up there. Joy Hammond sits right next to me, and I say, okay, today through Friday, what do we have? And we look and we say, okay, we've got elders meeting on Wednesday night, and looks like children's night out for the school on Friday. Anything else for this week? Anything else? Nope. Okay, next week, you know, 13th to the 20th, week of the, week of the 13th to the 20th. What's going on that week? Who's got something else to put in? You know, and we, we literally go week by week, one week at a time and throw stuff out loud. We get through the calendar meeting now probably in less than an hour to do a whole year. But people also send stuff to Joy ahead of time. We, I start advertising it a couple weeks out. Hey, semi-annual calendar meeting is in two weeks. Get your dates to Joy and let her plug them in the calendar. So people do that ahead of time. You know, you work ahead of time and get that done. That way when you're all there, you can see it, but you also can deconflict things, you know, where there's going to be issues and things are on top of of everybody you know you can you can kind of deconflict those things so it, it, and I just think I find it really helpful uh, to see visually what's coming at you what you know what you know you, you you're gonna be here there and everywhere but you, you it really is helpful to do this okay in and just you know what just yell at me if you got a question or comment or anything jump in um, so an in-progress review, an IPR. Anybody ever heard of one of those? So let me tell you what this is. <clears throat> this is a really cool event, and we use it at a meeting. We use IPRs for all of our major events. So things like Easter, which is a major event. So Palm Sunday and Easter is a major event. We use IPRs. So pretty soon, what we will start doing is I have a checklist of things that have to happen for Palm Sunday and Holy Week and Easter, right? It's a big, long checklist. I mean, all the services, everything. So we will start meeting probably eight weeks out. So we're, we're rapidly approaching our first Easter IPR. And I'll have my checklist, and I'll go right down the checklist, and I'll say, okay, here are the things that we have to do, and, and, and we're going to list them all. And then I'll say, here's what's, here's what's covered. This is done. This is done. This is done. Here are the things that we still have to figure out. This, 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 and this. So then what I'll do is the things that still need to be figured out, you know, like maybe we do an Easter, pa we do a Palm Sunday pageant, you know, and I'll say, well, you know, I need to see, I need to get a report from the worship team on where we are on the pageant. So, 
next time, tell me where we are and what your issues are, okay? So, and I assigned T.J. Winters, our, our pastor Winters, who's the director of worship. He, he's on the tagline for that, and I put his name on that. You know, tell me where we are. We do an Easter egg hunt every year. Tell me where we are on the Easter egg hunt. Nicole Carmines, our children's ministry director, you're on, the, you're on the tagline for that. I want to know where you are and what issues you're having next time we meet. And you assign people. Assign those taskers out there. It's called a tasker when you assign somebody a task. So we meet typically as we're leading up to an event every couple weeks, every two weeks usually. And then every week we go over the same checklist. And we say these things are still done and good to go. These things now have moved over to the good. You know, what's moved over? And then you get a briefing from the, from the worship team and then from the children's ministry team and then from, you know, the business manager and, and, and you know, everything. You just you go through your checklist. You have to develop a good checklist. You go through your checklist. It's called an in-progress review. So hopefully when you get about a week out, you can have an IPR, a couple IPRs that last week, and everything's nailed down. Everything's nailed down. So really, when Pastor Tucker goes to preach at an event on a Sunday morning, whenever, he didn't have to worry about anything because we've talked about it, right? And again, these are just one-line checklists. These IPRs last 15 minutes. It doesn't take long. It doesn't take long at all. You just have to, you just have to start six to eight weeks out and start doing them and figuring out where you are. It's backwards planning. Backwards planning 101. You got your, your big event. You start a little bit out and you backwards plan. What do I have to have done and when does it have to be done by, right? So then you roll right into an event and hopefully it's a lot, there's a lot less stress involved in that. So staff meetings, just, just regular old staff. Everybody have staff meetings? When, when is your staff meeting? When do you have it? Monday mornings. Monday mornings, okay. Who else? Monday morning. Monday morning, okay. Monday morning. Thursday, Tuesday, who said Tuesday? Tuesday, Mike, good. When? Tuesday. Tuesday, okay. Monday, <clears throat> okay. Whatever works for you, works for you. I, I am not a, um, a fan of Mondays, because on Mondays, let me tell you what's going on at our church on Mondays. The business office is counting money. The children's ministry is putting up crafts. Everybody, you know, uh, all, all tons of volunteers are around and, and our, and our uh, admin staff is putting in data, uh, who visited and, you know, who was there and who wasn't there. And they're putting a prayer list all together that were turned in on Sunday and everything else. Sun Monday for us is kind of a day of recovery. And it doesn't work out real great to have a meeting on Monday, okay? Because there's too much other stuff kind of going on. That, that's just for us there again. And I'm not, I'm not in any way criticizing. I'm just throwing that out there for you to think about. We do ours Tuesday morning at 9.30, and we have prayer time and devotion first, and that can last, I don't know, 30 minutes, could last an hour, could last 15 minutes, just depends on what's on people's hearts, you know, and we, we, we pray together and we, we talk through struggles and, and, um, and we have, you know, short devotion sometimes, it just kind of varies on what we do, but it's prayer time. And then we have a staff meeting. And our staff meeting, I don't think it, it doesn't ever go an hour. I mean, it's probably more like 30 minutes. So here's the key. And I probably have 25 people in that meeting. Here, here's the key. So if you're running that meeting, you, you've got to be specific, all right? So what I don't want is, you know, what I basically do is sit, sit kind of at the head of the table, and I just go around the table. I say, okay, John, what you got? And, you know, then I, go to, then I go to Nicole, what you got? Joy, what you got? Jesse, what you got? What you got? And, and I take notes on what they're saying. But they know because I've pounded it into them. I, I don't want their schedule for the week. I don't want them to tell me, well, you know, I've got the cam luncheon on Wednesday and the Bible study here on Thursday. And other than that, I'm good. Don't tell me that. That's your schedule. I don't want to know your schedule. Your, your schedule is doing ministry like everybody else. What I want to know is what big projects are you working on that are out there that's going to require everybody to know something about it, you know? So for the children's ministry, you know, I want to know, you know, we're, 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 we're approaching Easter, which means we're approaching VBS. So tell me where we are in terms of VBS. Tell me, are you, do you have all your directors in place for VBS? How many volunteers do you still need? Where are you on that? And what can we help you with? What are you going to need help with? You know, big projects, big real 
you know, the, the meat of ministry projects is what I want to know. I don't, I, I don't want to know that, you know, you're having fusion on Wednesday night. You have fusion every Wednesday night. I know that already, okay? So let's talk out loud and so people can ask questions and so people can help you and so you can ask for help if you need it, right? So that's kind of how our staff meeting goes. And, and again, you know, 25, 30 people in there sometimes, 30 minutes maybe, and that's it. I mean, and, and, and oh, by the way, it's okay if somebody says, well, I'm good to go. I got nothing, nothing new this week. Now, that maybe becomes an issue if that's all they ever say. You know, I mean, well, then what are you doing? You know, are we doing anything? You know, what's going on if you don't have anything to report, you know? But that's a private conversation where we say, hey, come on now, give me something. You know, you got something going on, right? What are you doing? You know, and we talk and, you know, you, you, you kind of have to circle back to this and keep people on track in a staff meeting, all right? Great chance for, uh, for, for communication. I tell you, communication is so key. It's, it's, it's what makes it go. Two-way communication, cross-communication, all kinds of communication. Let me ask you something. In your church, where's your coffee pot? Like day to day, you, if you were in the office right now today, where's your coffee pot? In the kitchen? Work room, yeah. Don't have one. Man, get a coffee pot, man. You don't have a coffee pot? Are you kidding me? <laughs> so ours, so, so the senior pastor's office is in this one corner of, of the second floor hallway. And, and my office is in the other corner, and there's this room between us. And it goes all the way through so like I can look and, and see him at his desk and he can see me. So the only coffee pot on the whole floor is in that little office between us. And our doors are always open. And so anyone that wants coffee or tea or hot chocolate or anything has to come to that room. That's because it gives us a chance to communicate with them and find out what's going on in their world. Hey, how was your weekend? What did you guys do? Oh, did you go to that movie you were going to go to? Yeah, how'd that go? You know, it's just... It's just a great way to communicate because the senior leaders don't always have time to walk up and down the hall 15 times a day. So that's a, that's a really unique way to get them to come to us. And for us, they have to come through one of our offices. They have to. And the doors are always open and they know if it's closed, then go in the other one. But there always is coffee there. There's always, and I see people two or three times a day. I see all my senior leaders two or three times a day, I'll bet you, just because they're, they're coming down to drink coffee and whatever else. So think that through. That's a, that's a great communication tool, I think, where you can, you can just do a little change. But I, we, we took up all the other coffee makers. We put one, one of those Keurigs. And we buy all the Keurig stuff. You know, charge. It's free coffee. So just come out. It's worth, that's worth the price. The communication that you'll get with your team and the things you'll learn and, and, and the way that you can kind of tear down the smokestacks that people love to build around themselves, it's worth it just right there, just a couple... You know, you just build that relation, build a relationship just, just a little bit every day. And, that, and it's, it's, it's unbelievable. It's great. All right, we're going to roll into the rock drill. Okay, this is the most important meeting that we have, the rock drill. So let me give you a little background on the rock drill. So in the Army, a maneuver commander, so an infantry or an armor commander, will receive a mission from the higher headquarters, yeah? And then all of his staff puts it on this big map. I mean, it's a map about the size of this board, okay? And so you're looking at a big map, which really doesn't mean a lot to a lot of people, right? And you talk through this mission, you know, on this map, and you say, you know, this is where we're going to attack this way, and so Alpha Company, you're going to be here going this way. Bravo, you're going to be here. And, you know, you, you kind of do it on the map, all right? And you get the gist of what's going to happen in this battle on the map as you look at it. Well, then what you do is, while, while that's going on with all the officers, the, the non-commissioned officers are outside building on the ground a big visual map. And so on this map, where there are mountains, they pile up rocks. And where there's a river or stream, they put blue yarn. And, you know, where there's, you know, some obstacle, they, they, they put that. And then what they do is every company that's, that, 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 that works for that commander has a rock and it has their company on it. And you lay them on the map just like we briefed it in the plan, okay? And then you gather all those leaders around that map 
and you move the rocks around this terrain, okay? And you tell them, look, you're gonna attack up this road. You're gonna drive up this road through these mountain, through this mountain range and attack, okay? So it's a visual, it's an outstanding visual where you can actually see the mountains and see the river and you see where you're gonna have to cross it right there. So it's a, it's a visual look at what you're getting ready to do, right? So let me just show you, here's a, hopefully this works. That, my friends, is a rock drill in Robin Hood of Loxley. A rock drill right there on the ground. That is literally just what it looks like in the Army. I have been, I have been at rock drills that look worse than that, okay? I, I'm, I tell you, it's fantastic. So it gives you a look at the battlefield. So what we do is we meet on Friday mornings. Okay, so we have staff meeting on Tuesday. So we're recovering on Monday. We have staff meeting on Tuesday. And then Wednesday and Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday, there's ministry going on and people are burning and churning and doing their thing. And then Friday, because remember we said Sundays roll around almost every seven days. So this is why we started a rock drill. Soon after I got out of the Army and took this job, it was a Saturday afternoon. We had, we had staff meetings on, two, on Tuesdays always, but we didn't have rock drill. And it was about 10 till 3, and the boss called, senior pastor. He says, hey, where's our organist? I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, well, I'm here at this wedding, and the organist is not here. Where is our organist? And I'm like, well, let me call him and find out. So I pick up the phone, and I call, and I'm like, Hey, John, what you doing? He goes, ah, I'm on a ladder, paint my house. I said, you are? He goes, yeah. And I said, so you're not going to play at that wedding today? Oh, my gosh, was that today? Oh, my gosh, I'll be right there, I'll be right there. Now, he made it, but I, I said to myself right then, this is never going to happen again. The problem was is there's too much time between Tuesday morning and Saturday afternoon because we had talked about this, this wedding on Tuesday. But life happens between Tuesday and Saturday. So Friday mornings at 9.30, we have the rock drill. And it is not a map, laid out map thing, but I thought what might be neat is if I, sh I shared with you my agenda so you can see exactly what we do at the rock drill, okay? A rock drill, our rock drill is designed to cover everything from 9.30 Friday morning until Monday morning at eight o'clock when we come back at work, all right? so that nothing gets left out. So we don't forget something, so that we know exactly what's coming at us for the weekend. We know that we're covered. We know we're planning. We know we got it, we got it under control, right? This is the meeting I would love for you to take back with you. If there's anything you leave here with, this, this, this really ought to be it. So this was my rock drill slides. This was my agenda. And by the way, the card I gave you on the back has my email address and on the front has I can read it, uh, best pra be bestpractices.church, which is a website that we created for this, for this conference. All of these slides will be up there. They're, they're, I will share them with you. I'll give them to you. They will all be up there when you leave here, okay? And if you need to call me my, or email me, my email's on the back. It's gregs at concordia.cc. So, you know, if you have ish questions, concerns, anything that we can share with you or my whole staff, we're a resource we'd love to hear from you and we'll, we'll give it away. We're not, we're all on the same team, right guys? So I mean, we're, we're, we're about helping wherever we can. 
So this is my rock drill agenda from last week, February 20th, okay? And so Jesse Martinez is our business manager. He's in charge of finance. He's also the facilities guy, so he, he, runs, our, uh, um, he runs the maintenance crew as well. And so he will brief. We have, we have a staff person on duty at, at every service. Usually it's just Saturday night, so Adair had duty last Saturday night, and all of us are there on Sunday. We call that, you know, an all-hands-on-deck sort of event. And then we have an elder of the day, okay? So Richard Jantz is a guy. RJ is Richard Jantz. He's a guy that is always at Saturday night. He is an elder, and he has volunteered to be our elder of the day at all Saturday night services. So he's always there unless he called us. So Lenny Links and Chris Arnold were at 8 and 11. We were down one at 9.30. So what does that tell me? Well, that means no one signed up for that or they signed up and then they've had something come up and they can't make it. That's where all comes in because now we know that we've got to be on high alert. Our elder of the day, his job is to be in the sanctuary with a radio on. We all have radios on Sunday morning and he's to keep his eyes and to make sure everything's going well. If he sees anything out of place, out, you know, some, I mean, probably at least three times a year we have to call an EMS because somebody passes out or something, right, TJ, when you say? So the elder of the day is great for that. Hey, we just had someone go down. You got to get over here, you know, wherever you are, quit what you're doing and come, boom, and we go. So, you know, anything uh, like people will wander in off the street looking for money and stuff, and I'll usually go and handle that and, and, and speak with them and try to help them and assist them. But all these things are what the elder of the day does. And so we, it's just a way, it's just a way to kind of beef up our staff on Sunday morning and have somebody that has eyes on what's going on in the sanctuary always, okay? So that's what Jesse will brief. And then TJ, who's sitting in the back, I didn't see you till I moved around. He's, he's our newest pastor through the SMP program. He is awesome. He is the director of worship, the pastor in charge of worship. What do we call you? Pastor of worship. Past Pastor of Worship Ministries, yeah. So, um, and he's awesome. So, he'll he'll brief. He'll this is his kind of page, and these are the people, his staff members that work for him. Okay. So, we know that John Titus, John Troutman, and Don Novian were the readers on Sunday, because we pre-schedule them, and then they confirmed. And so, as long as there's names in there, they confirmed. And I and I put this agenda together on a list that Doris Bindley gives to me. Usually on Friday morning, right about 8 o'clock, she comes down and hands me the list. We use Planning Center online. Do you guys, anybody else use Planning Center online? That's a great tool. It's a fantastic tool. If you don't, you maybe should look into it or use something like it. Um, but it's, it's great because you can schedule all these people in. You can send out um, notices. So the scripture reading, these guys have already, they, they've received an email with the actual scripture verse on there so they can practice before they get there. Um, it's, it's really great. So TJ will, uh, will brief us on any, any worship issues, anything special going on in worship, special music, and the readers, and then Doris will go through. We'll talk about whether we're having communion on Saturday night or on Sunday morning. We'll talk about baptisms, how many, and at which service. Uh, and all this is already filled in. And then we'll go down. Joe is our director of IT. He'll go through any tech issues. Um, Kathy McKnight works for TJ and does a lot of the production stuff. She sort of runs the services on the radio and produces the services and, and does a lot of our written media and, and some graphic design work as well. Um, John Moore is our sound guy, so he'll go over microphones and sound needs, anything that's out of the ordinary that we might need. Adair is kind of much the same. Uh, um, Matt Preston is our director of uh, contemporary worship, so he's primarily responsible for the 11 o'clock service and he'll talk about any special music, soloist, other people in the band that we need to know about, anything special or out of the ordinary. And Vicki Lautner is our organist. She, will, she goes over any, any of that stuff. So Joy Hammond is our director of public relations and marketing. Um, and and she, we do video announcements and her and Jonathan, Jonathan is not in here right now, but that's why I'm so mic'd up because they're videoing me, but it's not gonna look very good because it's dark in here but it's probably best, um, <laughs> but um, so Joy will talk through announcements. Sometimes we'll view the, the video announcement to look at it as a group just to see what it looks like, make sure it's up and running and looks good. 
And then uh, Rita, Rita Wagner is, is a new member on our staff. That's Pastor Steve Wagner's wife. Uh, they've just joined us, and she is working for Joy and, and doing events and, and things like that. Um, Nicole Carmines is our Director of Children's Ministry and Choir Director, and so she'll kind of brief both of those things. Mostly it's Sunday school for the kids. We do a kids' praise at 11 o'clock and a kids' praise junior for our small kids. So they come to 11 with their parents, and after the children's message, they all are dismissed, and they go to our old worship center, and they have a children's program that's age-appropriate so that we can kind of try to train them and get them ready for church. The confirmation director, Mary McDonald, Emily Preston is in children's ministry, and so is Aubrey Marshall. So they, you know, everybody's there. Everybody's listening and going through anything, you know, special that's going on. John Camrath is a pastoral care. He'll know who's in the hospital, which shut-ins have been visited, you know, things like that. Julie Tucker does missions and retreats. So several times a year as we ramp up to go on mission trips and, and do retreats. Um, Kathy Insenberger is our director of the child care. She'll be there in case for nursery needs and stuff because she runs the nursery. The school principal will be there, Sally McBee, along with the athletic director and the school tech guy and the food service director will all be, well, usually, honestly, Gay Schindler doesn't make the meeting because she's in the middle of preparing lunches for the kids. But she does call me if she has something she needs me to put out, like right now, because every Wednesday at noon we, we serve lunch. And so she will call and say, hey, remind them that Lenten lunch, here's what's on the menu, you know, for for next week for Lenten lunch or whatever, okay? And then our counselor, Beth Ann Kelm, is there. And really, I just kind of go right down the list and I'll say, Robin, what you got? And Robin manages our database and works with our new member class and the Welcome Center. And then Karen is our, uh, she's, she is our uh, admin, she's our administrative professional that, uh, that works directly for Pastor Tucker and as his, uh, keeps him straight, runs his calendar and tries to keep him out of trouble. That's a full-time job though. Um, then we go through the pastors. Pastor Nordley is a part-time pastor, and he'll say what's going on in his work. Pastor Dave McKnight, same thing. Uh, pastor Shrank, Ben Shrank, uh, Jeff's son is our youth pastor who is here, and he has a DCE, John Swisher, and we hear all about what they have coming at him for the weekend. Uh, pastor Steve Wagner is, gonna, is right now focused on J2E3, which is Jesus to everyone, every day, everywhere. Sort of a new initiative that we are, a new um, movement that we're sort of trying to spearhead. It's a discipleship thing. Um, and then Pastor McIntosh is our executive pastor. He teaches a large Bible study. It's called ABC, Adult Bible Class, typically on Sunday mornings and preaches some. And then Pastor Tucker is preaches. And then I go last and I wrap everything up. I say, okay, so here's what we got going. And I kind of regurgitate all the highlights, you know. Like last week, it said one it said one baptism at 9.30 and one at 11, because but really that was four and four. Really there were eight people baptized, but it was one family at each, but it was four people in each family. How cool is that? A dad and his three kids in one and then four kids in the other that we baptized. And initially when she had given it to me, she had said, you know, there's two baptisms, but she got in a hurry. She, she was talking families and I wrote that down. She goes, well, no, actually there's eight. So we did eight baptisms last week, which was really magnificent. And you can see this last week, um, Pastor Tucker was out of town, so Pastor McIntosh preached. Pastor McKnight preached on Saturday night and Vespers on Sunday night. Pastor Wagner was in ABC, and we commissioned uh, eight new Stephen ministers. So um, that's the rock drill in a nutshell. And it works for us, and I literally take this, and we go right down the list. TJ, how long does a rock drill last? 20 minutes just like that yeah maybe 30 because there's usually you know our staff's a pretty cohesive uh, bunch and so there's usually some craziness you know and some some picking on one another and whatever else so maybe it goes a little longer but you could do it in 15 or 20 minutes easy <coughs> easy and get it all done all right everybody still with me not nodding off asleep of yet all right remember we're now we're to Friday we started kind of we started on Tuesday morning at the staff meeting after we got through the twice a year, the calendar meeting. IPRs are kind of whenever, whenever you got a major event coming at you. Tuesday morning staff meeting, the rock drill, the most important meeting is the rock drill. Now the huddle. 
30 minutes prior to the first service on Sunday morning. It's, um, we meet in the sacristy, and really it's a check-in. TJ, the pastor of worship, leads that meeting. I don't lead that meeting, he does. And um, it's to make sure nothing's changed since Friday. You know, have we changed anything? You know, and there have been times where we've had a solo is scheduled, all of a sudden he or she is sick, and they're not. And so we've had to pun a song and do a different song. You know, we've had to change something. So this, you know, we basically go through all three services just really quick. Anything different from 8 o'clock other than what we discussed? Nope. We got no baptisms and there's no communion, okay? 9.30 service, okay? We've got, you know, four baptisms. Um, this is going to be the order that we baptize them. We decide right then what the order is going to be. And usually it's ladies first and we go from there. And then we go to the 11 o'clock service. Oh, yeah, well, our soloist is sick, so... We're going to sub in another song. Not sure what it is yet. We'll let you know before 11. Perfect. So here's Pastor Tucker's thing. So we do the huddle, and then it's go time, right? And he, he, has, he has said to me on several occasions, listen, man, if something goes wrong in the service, you got to come out and tell me how we're, how we're going to fix it. Don't ask me how to fix it. you got to solve that problem and tell me how to fix it. I can't be in the problem-solving mode when I'm preaching. So if something goes wrong... Tell me how we're going to fix it. So last Sunday morning, Pastor Tucker's out of town. Pastor McIntosh is in the middle of his sermon at 8 o'clock. And guess what happens? Amber alert. And tons of people had their phone, their, they didn't cut their phone volumes off. So you get that, that chirping noise, you know. And all of a sudden, Pastor McIntosh in mid-sermon goes, oh, that doesn't sound good. And then they all went off because it only goes for just, just like a, chirp 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 and then it goes off but then in like 15 seconds later so he starts preaching again you get two of them you know so 15 seconds later amber alert you know and he's like okay that's concerning me he's and, he, and, and I was sitting kind of like right there where you are and he says Greg do we need to check on that and I knew what it was and I, I said I stood up and I said no it's an amber alert we're all good he said okay all good thank you boom he hopped right back in didn't miss a beat but see that's the kind of thing I mean you got to be prepared for anything that can go wrong because Murphy's still going to be out there lurking. You know, the devil loves to mess up our details, right? There's nothing you can do that is going to prevent the sound from not working the way it did when we tested it. There's nothing you can do to prevent everything from going right, you know, or everything, things from going wrong. You're going to have some issues. That's okay. You should be prepared if you run through this to fix those things and then just move on, right? So the huddle is our last look before we go, and then it's go time, yeah? So that's how we get through a week. Um, I would tell you if you just were to take home the rock drill and, and try that, I, I think you'll find that it's so, much, it's so much nicer to be able to go into a service knowing that every, go into the weekend, go into a service knowing that, that you've kind of got everything, you know, all your T's crossed, all your I's dotted. I just think it's really critical. It's really helped us. And, I, and I, I think our staff would tell you the same thing. I mean, I think, you know, in fact, it's always, you know, if, 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 if there's something on Friday, like, you know, we have a funeral Friday at 10 o'clock, you know, the first thing someone says is, when's Rock Drill going to be? You know, it's like we need that. We got to have that because, you know, it also, it frees you up after your staff meeting on Monday or Tuesday to not worry about, just do your thing and not worry so much about the weekend. Focus on ministry and then let's we'll worry about it on Friday because we're going to talk about it again. And we all know we're going to talk about it again. So in doing that, it, I think it's very helpful. But again, I mentioned Planning Center Online is really great. It's a way to, you know, we run our services from Planning Center Online. And then, you know, Murphy's out there and, and there are going to be issues. So the only meeting, the only meeting left is... AARs and, de and debriefs, okay? So th this is where I, I refer you back to create the plan and execute the plan. That's why you have an after action review or a debrief. So Monday mornings at 1130, all of the key leaders that were in worship will meet in, in, in the senior pastor's office and we go through each service of the weekend and we identify what went well, what was great, you know, how do we replicate that? How do we make it even greater? How do we make it better? Was the, 
you know, what didn't go so well? What happened, you know? So like the debrief on Monday, we talked about the Amber Alert mm -hmm. and how uh, these things happen sometimes. But, you know, fortunately, it was just that. What if it had been a fire drill? <laughs> That's a nightmare is what that is. <laughs> if, it's, if, it's an, if it's a fire drill, you won't have to ask what that was. You'll know. <laughs> but, um, you know, we talk through every service and we, we figure out ways to improve the plan for next time. You know, that's where, if you got a great idea, that's where you insert that great idea. But the plan's already been developed all week long. A couple times we've talked through this stuff. We got to execute that plan, yeah? So I would think um, that this is really important. And you know what? Don't, don't forget to celebrate. Uh, too often, places don't celebrate enough. You know what? Um, if it was really great, man, let's tell people that. You know, tell them how great it was. You know, it, it and we'll, what we do on our staff sometimes is, you know, if somebody will, somebody will, you know, in our staff meetings or in Rock Drill or something, they'll brief something like, well, you know, we've, you know, we've now included Wi-Fi on the whole campus, you know, and so, you know, there are no more dead spots. I've checked it all, you know, our IT guy, and I'll be, oh, dang, golf clap for Joe, and everyone gives him a little golf clap, you know, and then he kind of laughs and he gets all embarrassed. Celebrate it. You know, tell them what a great job they do. That's really important that people hear that because all too often we're just on to the next thing, on to the next thing. Cele don't forget to celebrate. I mean, you know, after a while, things are going to happen, and, but, but in general, it's really great, right? We're reaching people. So we should be doing a lot more celebrating. Hey, hit that light, will you? We should do a lot more celebrating. Thank you. We should be doing a lot more celebrating than, than we probably typically do. So this is sort of my, my spiel, and I'm 45 minutes, so we're kind of right on time, pending your, your questions or comments or any ideas. Yes, sir? Talk a little bit about the attendees of each of the meetings, the, the, the breadth, and how do you manage days off? Okay. And getting, you know, that you got the right people in the right place. Good question. So let me, let me go backwards at that. So days off. Okay. If, if you work on Sunday, then you get a day off during the week, except you don't get Friday and you don't get Tuesday. All right. So Monday is also a day that a lot of people take off. Uh, a couple people take Wednesday, but typically it's usually a Monday or a Wednesday that people will take off, which is fine. Though these meetings are sort of what I call all hands on deck. That means Unless you got something special going on, you got to be there because it's important for us to look each other in the eye a couple times a week and keep the thing moving, right? That may mean you have some people that aren't there to do this. Yeah, it, it could be, but, but typically, the, okay, let me go, then I'll go backwards. So the debrief has the contemporary music director, um, TJ Winters, the, the, the worship leader, the executive pastor, the senior pastor, the pastor who probably preached on, you know, on the weekend or on Saturday night and Sunday night, and then a couple, there's only probably seven or eight of us really in that one. It's the people who really are executing the plan, you know. So the sound guys and all that, hey, look, if the sound was bad, they know it. They don't need to come to a meeting to hear the sound, what happened with the sound this weekend, you know. Well, you know, John nodded off and hit a button. I don't know, you know, I mean... <laughs> I don't know what happened to the sound. It wasn't, we didn't try to make it bad. It's Murphy, you know, or whatever. So though, that's, a, that's just a very small uh, a number of people. Joy Hammond usually comes because she does the video. And um, Jonathan Sosa, our, our, he's our videographer. He's, he's the guy that's setting up the camera. You see him around. He's he, not even there. So those are just a couple of senior directors in there uh, that, are, that are running, that are in that meeting. Because those are the guys, you know, the executive pastor has, so is Zach McIntosh is our executive pastor, and he and, and TJ Winters, the, the pastor for worship, works for him. And all that worship team, the music, you know, the choir and all that. So Nicole Carmines will be there because of the choir, and Joy will usually be there. Haman, our, our PR and marketing and media person, will be there, and me, and then it's just a bunch of pastors usually. And so there's like seven. There's like seven of us, you know. So it's not so those are the people that are going to go and talk to their staff and say, hey, we got to get this right and we got to get that right. Now, rock drill is what I like to call lottie dotty and everybody. 
because everybody needs to hear the plan. So, no, you know, anybody can come to the rock drill, but all the, all the directors are there for sure. And lots of, and lo, you know, those people, a lot of the folks on that agenda, I mean, if it just says children's ministry, then they're not a director. Nicole Carmines is the director, but the confirmation, the lady that runs confirmation is there. Both of the two other gals that work for Nicole in children's ministry are there, you know, but at a minimum, you know, if the school principal's not there, she sends the assistant principal usually. So at a minimum, all the directors are there. And that's like 17 directors or something like that. And we've got six senior directors that everybody works for a senior director except me and Zach. We own the senior directors and then everybody else kind of works for them. We're trying to make that thing wider instead of taller so that we can... And there's our videographer, Jonathan Sosa, right there. Take a bow. <laughs> yeah, that's right. See, there you go. That's good. So, uh, yeah, so, but Rock Drill, everybody, all those folks are at the Rock Drill because, you know, it, I mean, the best ideas, you know, sometimes come from not your directors and certainly not me and not your senior directors, but, you know, people who are out there doing the thing, you know, the kids, the guy, you know, the gal that's out there teaching, you know, the kindergarten in the first grade class has a great idea. Not me. I don't have a great idea. I, they do, though. And so if, if we just listen, that's why they're there. You know, they say, well, you know, we could do, you know, we've, we've, we volley back and forth on how's best to check in and check out kids all the time because of security issues and everything else. And, you know, the, they're the ones that have put together our current plan because they do it. You know, they're down there doing it. And so they, they put together the plan and we all execute it. And it works. It's great. So we celebrate that, you know. Um, we think other meetings, uh, other meetings, the IPRs usually, you know, that Tuesday morning staff meeting is for everyone as well. Um, especially the prayer time, everybody on the whole floor is there. And then usually people stay for the director's meeting as well, unless they're working on something that's critical and they got to go though. But usually they'll stay for that one as well. Because again, they're not real long. I mean, I, I'm talking 30 minutes for a staff meeting. That's nothing. I mean, it's worth having more ears there to hear what's going on and hear what's important. You know, Bill and I keep lists and we ask questions too. You know, if I get to, you know, if I get to Nicole and she says, oh, nothing, I'm good. I might say, well, tell me where we are on the Easter egg hunt since Easter's right around the corner. Oh, well, okay, well, we went out yesterday. Our Easter egg hunt, we rolled out, I want to say 37,000 eggs filled with candy last year on our field and like two, two or 3,000 kids come. It's the fastest two minutes in sports, man. <laughs> we, 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 they're, they're all, the field's roped off by age and, these, and, and, the, and our football field is just eggs. It's just eggs everywhere. And it's like, we, there's a big countdown and it's like, go! And it's like ants on a jelly donut, man. <laughs> and it's just like kids out there and, and but it's, 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 so, it's over just that fast and then we're done. But we have to stuff 35,000 eggs, 37,000 eggs. So what we do is, is we buy them like the week after Easter for the next year because they're giving them away practically because you can't get them Hobby Lobby, you can't get rid of them fast enough or whatever. And we buy all this candy when it goes on sale. And then we put garbage bags of um, candy and, and eggs together, all calculated out. So it's the right amount of candy to go in the eggs. And we ask our congregation to take them home and fill them and then bring them back next Sunday. And 37,000 of them get done in a week. It's cool. Big, giant garbage bags full of them. So it's pretty cool. Um, but it's important for everybody to hear that, you know, because otherwise people are you're wandering around with these eggs and they're like, uh, where do these go? And <laughs> I don't know. Where to, what is it? <laughs> I don't know where those go. But they do because they're going to be in the meeting and we're going to talk about that. We're going to, we're going to tell everybody, you know, where, where those go. So that's, that's kind of that's a good question, though. The day off, though, is, is pretty critical that they're there on Tuesday and Friday. You know, no days off on Tuesday and Friday, you know. And, and you know what, honestly, we're working hard, man. I try to kick people out on Friday afternoons sometimes, you know. Just, you know, you just got to keep your finger on that pulse and say, hey, let's get out of here. We're going to get everybody out of here today if we can, you know. That's just important sometimes, you know. Time's more important than, than money, often, as a reward. So, what else? Anything else? Sir? For our church, we don't have them all on the weekend for our services. We have like a Thursday evening service. 
So how would you like adapt your schedule to that kind of a scenario? Is it the same service as you will do on Sunday? It is. We have like a traditional and a contemporary, and the traditional is pretty much the same as the traditional on Sunday. And so same, same message, same, same sermon? Right. Same. So then I would maybe, uh, do you have it Thursday night? Mm -hmm. I'd do rock drill Thursday morning. Uh, for the whole weekend. That's fine. Sometimes if we have to change it, we'll do it on Thursday. And I like, if we're going to change it, then I like to do it Thursday afternoon because it's just closer to the weekend. But you're going to go through it one time on Thursday night. So that's a pretty good refresher. I'd say I'd do it Thursday morning early, first thing. Give yourself a chance to fix anything that's broken in there in that, on Thursday and then execute it. That's what I'd do. That'd be my recommendation just right off the. Of, you can do a rock drill for anything. On, we used to, on, we have our, our VBS. How many kids we have pre-registered for VBS last year? Like 1,400 kids. And we had not any, not any one day had less than 1,100 kids and 850 volunteers. So, and they're, and they're, and they're changing and moving all over. And so when, when Susie sees her friend Lori and they're in different groups, well, all of a sudden they are in the same group, we lose them and we lose kids. I mean, not really, hopefully, <laughs> but, but it's like, you know, so we rocked, we, but there's this one place on our campus, everyone knows where it is, where we lose kids because groups are doing this. One group's going into the gym, the other group's coming out of the cafeteria and going to the field, and it's just like a, it's just like a big storm of kids, man. Just kids everywhere, and you know, you take your little, lead your little group in there, and you know, sometimes, uh, you know, our, our, our sixth, seventh, and eighth graders, sixth grade and higher are our fifth grade or higher. Fifth grade and up are, are our uh, crew, leaders. crew leaders, that's what we call them. So crew leaders sometimes think that the 80% rule can always be in effect, and as long as they had 80% of their kids when they get where they're going, it's okay. But that's not the case. So we have done rock drills where we will physically walk the campus, just like you saw in Robin Hood. We go down there and we say, okay, you see this intersection? This is where we're going to lose kids. So let's station people here, 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 and let's watch them like a like a hawk watch them coming and do it and, and we have a code on the radio we don't we used to scream lost kid lost kid and then everyone hears that and people are in a panic you know so we call it a pastor white and if they say I've got a pastor white that means we've got we've got a kid that is temporarily disoriented they're not lost they never lost they're just temporarily disoriented okay and then we you know, what's it, what, what was he wearing oh yeah that's a Martinez kid you know we can find it we know him we, we got him one of our our, our uh, business manager, Jesse Martinez, up there has 14 kids. They're all adopted. And there for a few years, it was always a Martinez kid lost. Uh, you know, but we, we get them all back together. But after we start rock, rock drilling it and finding out where, what the issue was and why that was that way, we, could, we fixed it. The last, I don't know, three years, I don't think we've had a single, a single kid disoriented. We, we, I mean, you know, it, it's amazing. And there for a while, <laughs> it was a, there was always someone lost, you know. <laughs> and that's a stressful time, you know, when you lose someone else's kid, you know. And, uh, but you rock drill. You can rock drill anything. You can do an IPR for anything, all right. The IPR is just a backwards plan. The rock drill is just, let's sit down and go over the checklist and see, make sure we know what we're getting ready to do, you know. But it's, it's really important, I think. And, and I think you could do it, I don't care how big your church is, even if, if you're just one of one. Sit down and do it yourself. Run through a checklist. Develop a really good checklist of things you know you're going to have to have. Readers, I mean, communion, communion elders, our elders serve communion. Six, seven, eight. So every time we serve communion, it requires 16 communion elders. That's tough some mornings, you know, because vacations happen and Saturday night happens and, you know, people say they're coming to church and then they don't and they get sick and, you know, hey, well, our church is no different than yours. But, hey, if, if, if they're on the list and, and you make them sign up for that and you, you, and you confirm it with them, they're more likely to show up. And then if you, if you are going to have a hole, at least you know. So on Friday morning, I know how many I'm going to be looking for on Sunday morning. I know at each service how many I'm going to be looking for. And typically, by Sunday morning's huddle, Doris has them all filled in because she's already she's heard back from people or she's emailed some people. She'll get on the email on Friday afternoon and say, hey, I need, I need elders to serve communion. You know, I need 
4 at 9.30 and 6 at 11. Email me if you can serve one of those. And by, by the huddle, by, that, by Sunday morning at 7.30, we're full. We're good. And they always show up. It's good to know that up front. It's good to know how many you're going to need instead of just wandering in on Sunday morning wondering who's going to show up. You know what I mean? It just make, it just make as a pastor and, and a staff member and a, and a music person or who, whatever your role is, it'll, it'll, you'll feel better. You'll feel better knowing if you do that rock drill. I, I swear you will. It's just, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's an amazing thing. It's really cool. Um, we had someone that we shared this with. They brought a staff over to our church. It was before Easter last year. And he said, I'm going to take this rock drill and I'm going to implement it for Easter. We're going to do it. And he did it. He did an agenda. We helped him do the agenda and he did it. And he, he, call, he called Pastor Tucker the week after Easter and said, I got to tell you something. That was the most stress-free free Easter I have ever had. He said it was amazing. He said, I, I, I didn't feel like I had anything. I worried because I didn't feel like I had anything to do. He said, all I had to do was stand up and preach. And that's the goal. That's the goal. The pastor shouldn't have to worry about anything other than just preaching. That's what you ought to be doing. So do a little bit of work there ahead of time, and you'll get better at it, too. You get better and better at it, and you'll, you'll adapt it to meet your conditions, and you'll get better and better at it. And on Sunday morning, you just show up and preach, man, and that's the greatest thing in the world. I mean, that's what, you know, that's what we want for our pastor, and I'm sure your, your staffs want that for you. You know, They want you just to be up there doing your best proclaiming the gospel, right? So... Anything else? Yes, ma'am. So who in particular runs the rock drill? I do. Yes, ma'am. I do. So in a smaller church that doesn't have a youth, would it would be pastors? Or could be. Like I'm our parish administrator, so okay. probably one. You could. I usually don't get involved, super involved in worship, but I guess. You, c- you could, or the pastor could. Out, so. Yeah, you could, or the pastor could. You know, and, and I mean, if you take this concept back to him and you volunteer to do it, give it a try. Why not? I mean, you know what? You know everything that's going on, though. Probably more than him. He's the last one to know everything that's going on. I promise. You're the first. You know everything that's going on. Karen, our administrator, she can run the rock drill. Piece of cake. She never has any input for it. She knows everything that's going on, though. She knows everything. So I would say you could do it. Sure. Why not? If that takes a load off of him, then give it a whirl. Try. I mean, it, it, it's worth a try, I think. I really do. Well, thanks. You guys have been awesome. Um, we'll be around. Have a great conference. Really appreciate it. Thank you. And, and you guys can write, call, anything. I'll give my cell number to anybody that wants it. All you got to do is call, and we'll help you any way we can uh, from Concordia in San Antonio. Oh, yeah. Hey, TJ, if you don't do Planning Center, or if you do... TJ is a master of planning center. He's got a session tomorrow on planning center. It's TJ, at 4 p.m. Just to let you guys know, he talked about it. It's the only reason I'm bringing it up. But since he mentioned it a few times, if you don't use planning center to plan your worship services, it's a great tool, like he said. It is. I'm doing a session tomorrow at 4 p.m. So, so if you want, you ought to see that if you're not using planning center for sure. Howdy. Steve Saunders from St. John, oh, yeah. In Cyprus. Yeah, right? good to see you. Yeah. 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 Um, so what's your schedule? When do you take a day off? That's what I'm saying. Saturday. That's right now. Yeah, Saturday yeah, usually. Six days, yeah. Yeah, pretty much. Okay. But you know, I, I'm here's sorry, a... Because I'm, I'm you there. Yeah, so here's the thing. <laughs> I mean, uh, I mean, does your pastor take a day off? 